Hello and welcome to the special edition of The Intersection with me, Graham Hughes. And t- tonight I'm joined by Rachel Harris and also by India Willoughby. Hi, India. Hi, Rachel. How are you doing? I'm Hi. Good. Thank you very much for inviting me on. Oh, you're very, very welcome. So uh, you're, you've had a week. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's been the week from hell. Um, easily the worst ever week, which is saying something in terms of trolling. Obviously, being um, known and being on social media as a trans person um, attracts a lot of attention. Um, And even if you're not known these days, just being trans seems to be a political statement. But this last week has been off the charts, Mm -hmm. off the scale. Um, And yeah, a lot of people are probably aware of of what's happened. I mean, you've had a couple of run-ins. Can you just talk about Previously, the other there was I was looking in Pink News the other day. You've had two big run-ins, really. There. Can you talk about the original one and and what's led into this and and, and what the history of it is? It's really useful for people watching. I I, I think to to start this, yeah. I I would say that um, you know as a journalist who's who mm. works in the media, um, obviously mm. I am going to be in a situation where I will be commenting yeah. on what J.K. Rowling says just by virtue of the fact that she's jk rowling she's got 14 million squillion uh followers and she only has to say hello really for it to make the front page of the times of of the daily mail Mm. so obviously her comments have a lot of impact that ripple around the world and they 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 certainly affect um me Mm. so inevitably I will comment on what J.K. Rowling um, has said about the trans population. So um, my two recent encounters, Mm. um, first of all, I I was approached by a national newspaper, which I won't name here because uh, we all know what happens. If, If you cross the gender critical swarm, it's horrendous. It's like... (laughs) <laughs> making the Church of Scientology angry. Yeah. They will um, send out the swarm and come and get you. So mm. this UK national newspaper approached me to write about what it was like being a trans person in the UK um, and specifically um, what impact JK Rowling was having on the trans community. And this took place in the week when... Um, she'd made a tweet with the hashtag not our crimes Mm. referring um, to a murderer called Scarlett Brown, if I recall correctly, Mm -hmm. who uh, was a trans person um, who coshed a random passerby over the head, pushed them in the river and was done for murder quite rightly. And as we know, there are all kinds of murderers out there. Yeah. Every demographic, every occupation. Yeah. It's not unusual, you know, for there to be a trans killer. It's not unusual for there to be a cis killer. Mm. Um, and yet J.K. Rowling had made this uh, tweet saying, not our crimes. And, and essentially pushing on collective responsibility to the trans community for this murder. So that was the basis of the article that they wanted uh, me to write, uh, which I did. And it went to the the newspaper and they said, well, obviously with it being JK Rowling, she's extremely litigious. We have to pass it through legal. So a couple of hours passed and they got back and they said, yeah, it's fine. Absolutely perfect. uh, We love it. We're gonna run it tomorrow morning. Um, And when I woke up in the morning, I had a message um, to contact the editor, which I did. And to cut a long story short, somehow, I don't know how, uh, word got out that this article had been written. And the swarm had been emailing into the newspaper, making all kind of horrendous threats. Um, And the editor had taken the decision uh, I can't put my staff in danger 
given what has been said and what's been sent through. So on that basis, and and the person said, I feel really sorry because obviously newspapers and the press shouldn't be intimidated in this way, but I do have to think of the staff. So given those circumstances, we can't run it. So I was disappointed, obviously, because once again, it, me it meant that, you know, the trans side of JK Rowling, our perspective on her wasn't being heard. We'd been stymied, stuffed mm -hmm. out. Um, mm -hmm. So there was that thing. And then the second one, which is the big thing, um, was um, I went on Twitter um, and somebody messaged me to say, have you seen this? And I said, no. And they sent me over and JK Rowling had tweeted to um, a third party. I wasn't involved in this conversation at all. Um, but JK Rowling had tweeted to this uh, third party underneath a clip of me in Celebrity Big Brother. Um, the a tweet along the lines of, I can't remember exactly, but it was along the lines of um, India Willoughby is not a woman. He is a misogynistic man cosplaying his fantasy of what a woman is. A few mm. of those words might be slightly in the different order, but that's mm. the essence of it, which to me is very clearly a hate crime. You know, um, she's named me. I'm not cosplaying as a woman, I am legally a woman. I've done absolutely everything that mm. is required of me. I am recognized by the British state mm. as a woman that is widely known, not just in the UK, but throughout the world, given all of the uh, the media things that I've done, TV, radio, newspaper articles. JK Rowling knows uh, whether she will admit it or not uh, mm. that I am legally a woman mm. and that I'm not cosplaying. I have a protected characteristic in that I underwent full gender reassignment, which again has been widely publicized. Um, and yet she made this tweet demeaning me mm. and holding me up for ridicule. And I would say hatred because it's beyond credibility to say that JK Rowling does not know mm. what happens when she tweets about trans people. Yeah. She invariably goes to number one on trending on Twitter. Yeah. And I think that's what happened in, in this case. She was certainly uh, high up. I was, my name was listed on the trending thing. Mm. And the avalanche of abuse was, even for me, I, yeah. I get it every day. And you, you can't, it's, it's vile, it's horrendous, but mm. you learn to, you know, yes. get by and you develop a thick skin. Mm. Um, but this was, was unprecedented and it continues until um, today. I've had thousands of messages threatening me um, a number of death threats. I'm already under a credible death threat from a Nazi organization that say exactly the same rhetoric as the gender critical movement. Um, and as a result of, of all this, I thought, right, well, this is too much. Mm. So I, I contacted the police, first of all, I contacted Edinburgh police. Yeah. And they told me that the protocol was that, um, for these crimes that you actually report to the closest geographical police station first and then they take it from there um and for the last um few weeks i've been in the northumbria area so i contacted northumbria police uh filled in a template form of what had happened um i got a call from northumbria police asking to take the details over the phone. I think they called it a preliminary statement. Um, but that's that preliminary statement was completely unsatisfactory because I I told them what had happened. And as mm. soon as I mentioned the name JK Rowling, I could tell it was like somebody had sprinkled stardust yeah. 
in the eyes of the call handler. Mm. And um, the conversation became one of, well, are you sure you didn't provoke her? Are you sure you didn't do this? And it, it, it mm. felt as if the tables were being turned. So I explained, I said, well, if you go on Twitter, you'll see I'm, I'm this isn't a conversation that was actually involving me. I wasn't chatting to her in mm. any way. She just took it upon herself mm. to say these things. Um, this individual tried to log on to, he said, I don't have full access to Twitter. I can't see the chronicle order. order of, and it was all very confused. Um, I then got a message 48 hours later saying, can you come in and um, we'll tell you what's happening. So I went in and they, they just said, we're not proceeding with it as a hate crime. We're going to treat it as a non-crime hate incident, which I'll explain in a minute, a non-crime incident hate incident mm, um, and I was in so, so much shock at the time that it completely went out my head that I hadn't even been afforded the opportunity to do an in-person statement wow. they were basing this decision not to prosecute solely on whatever information the call handler who hadn't been able to access to it had passed on so to this day, I don't know what story was told about what happened. So um, to bring you up to speed, oh, it's important to mention, yeah, a non-crime hate incident. So what that is, you actually have to split that in half. So if it doesn't meet the criteria of a hate crime in itself, it's called, it, um, it, you satisfy the non non-hate element of that non-hate crime phrase. So they, mm. the Northumbria police felt that they wouldn't get a prosecution for a hate crime, but it does satisfy the cr uh, criteria for a hate incident, mm. which is logged. It's, I'm not happy about it at all because this is far, far worse than that. The distress I have suffered of this last week has been appalling and as far as I'm concerned and the legal advice that I've had from people in the profession who are really high up that is mm. that this is a clear cut case so I've been back at the police today I can't really say too much more because obviously mm. we're now getting into the um to the possibility of legal um action yeah. but yeah I'm I'm not letting it drop at yeah. this stage because I I feel it's it's clear cut. It's impacted my life. Um, mm. It breaches a number of acts. Um, and I just feel it's mm. really important, not just for me mm. either. I think this is really important for the trans yeah. community uh, as a whole. So that's where we are. Wow. And I mean, how are you, how do you, Thank you for sharing that. I mean, that is amazing that you've been strong enough to talk about this and go through that in such good detail. How do you look after yourself? I mean, I think pretty a lot of trans people have been subject to abuse. I mean, I came off Twitter two years ago and I'm not on Facebook, um, you know, and that's helped. I mean, I feel a bit disconnected from my friends, but it was important. How do you cope? What do you do when that, how do you, who do you turn to? What are your coping strategies? Um. Well, I don't necessarily cope, actually. You know, I felt really anxious. My heart has been racing. I've had, even today, you know, people sending me um, short videos of people loading up a gun with bullets in, saying, uh, this is what you need. Mm. Um, so, yeah. you know, I think it's perfectly yeah. reasonable. Anyone, anyone in receiving those types mm. of messages is going to be stressed and anxious. You know, their heart is going, going to race and I'm yeah. not um, above that. I don't have any coping mechanisms. It's mm. it's horrible. It's absolutely disgusting what's happening. And I just find it incredible that all of this is out there in the public mm. domain. Yeah. It's, not, it's not something that's gray or ambiguous yeah. and this could mean that and that could mean that. Th these are videos of people loading guns saying that they're coming for me and that I should be put down, that I should be killed. 
And even with all of that, that I can present to the police, they're saying this isn't a hate crime. I know for a fact, guaranteed, if the very same tweets had been made by, let's say, uh, towards Jewish people, and that there were threats online today yeah. saying this Jewish person is going to get shot, we're yeah. going to take them out. The police would be round to that individual's house yeah. super quick. But because we're trans, trans just isn't, transphobia just is not taken no. seriously. And I, I honestly don't feel, in my experience, mm. that the police force actually fully understand the law. They're not taking it serious on one level. And yeah. the second level is, I think they, 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 they're they of the view because they've only given it a cursory look, a superficial glance, mm. that the uh, Forstata Employment Tribunal yeah. means that gender critical individuals are essentially entitled mm. to say what they like. Yeah. When that clearly is not the case, the Forstata ruling mm. made it very clear that gender critical people are, yes, entitled to their beliefs, yeah. but they cannot, and this was stressed explicitly, mm. they cannot um, harass uh, or maliciously misgender yeah. individuals. And that mm. is specifically what has happened here. I'm not in the environment of an employment tribunal. This isn't about the workplace. Yep. This is about a global celebrity with enormous reach, minimum 14 million people who knows exactly what will happen when they tweet in a particular way, naming me and making comments which are derogatory. Yep. And all I'm asking is for somebody to do something about that. And I don't think I'm asking too much. You're not, India. And I think your story, both your stories line up because the, the article that you were going to write and be in the newspaper is that the, the fact that they're demonizing trans people. Our voices, I can't remember the last time I saw, I saw a, a good article in a national newspaper about from a trans voice. You know, we don't appear in papers anymore it, as as humans. We don't, there's no positive stories about us. You know, we're not sitting on, we're not, there's not much celebrity on television that are trans. There's no, so we're silenced. And, you know, it might be an issue on race, like we've got with the Tory party this week, or it might be something to do with Jewish Palestine um, issues and discussion. But if it's a trans thing, it just doesn't get anywhere and because people yeah. just don't care because there's no human side of our faces in the media which is the first part linking up with your second police just don't care they just don't feel it you know they're not you know in the workplaces that i've worked in you know they're just that everybody's so nervous because mm -hmm. there are gender critical people in workplaces and they're not quite sure what the law is they don't know how far they can go to and so they just either they don't recruit trans people or they're not protecting them and it that yeah. it feels but the fact is that it's silent on trans in the media now. Yeah, and um, this this is going to si sound a little bit odd, but given that the big story uh, today is actually about the horrific abuse of Diane Abbott, you know, misogyny and racism, um, and somebody saying publicly, um, you know, this person deserves to be shot. Obviously, because I'm going through something um that is akin to that at the moment it's very striking to me in the difference um of how it's actually being covered by media yeah. i haven't had any sympathy from any news outlet no. in the uk no. all that's happened in the uk is people have written supporting jk rowling's right yeah to make these kinds of statements. Yeah. Now, J.K. Rowling hasn't threatened to have me shot or have me physically hurt. And she will say, this has got nothing to do with me. If somebody makes those kinds of threats, I, that's beyond my control. Yeah. But that's what I want the police to look into because yeah. I feel with great 
reach and fame goes mm. great responsibility mm. too. Um, but I just find it really interesting that um, because my issue isn't racism, it's not um, about a religion, um, mm. it's trans. Yeah. And there's no sympathy no. out there. You you can treat trans people like dirt. You can say what you like about them. Yeah. Um, and neither the, the police uh, or the media will um, be no. supportive towards you. No. Which 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 it it gives me a number of emotions. I feel upset about that. I feel yeah. frustrated about that. And I feel really angry about it as well. I mean, what is the next step? If you can go out and publicly say or tweet mm. um, that a trans woman yeah. is a man, even though you know <laughs> whether you agree with it and accept yeah. the definition is neither here or there, but mm. you know that individual is yeah. recognised legally as a woman and they live as a woman and mm. this is the pronouns that they use. You know all that information mm. and you make these kinds of statements mm. and it's page one transphobia. It's the most trans obviously transphobic thing you could say to a trans woman and the police will do nothing. So it begs the question, what actually would someone have to say mm in the eyes of the police mm. for it to be classed as transphobia. I don't know. Mm. Well, it, it, the cruelty of it, I mean, you have, it feels like as a trans person that you have to die before. The yeah, people. I think so. I think that with Brianna, I mean, even then they were talking about it not being a hate crime for quite a while and the judge very yep. clearly said it was. And then the this horrible community then blame Brianna's mother, you sh you've got a trans child, you're obviously a bad parent, all those, those, this absolute frenzy that they go to, it doesn't matter, oh, well, now they're going to hold, Rachel's been murdered, India's been murdered, now they'll hold up some, them as an icon now, you know, uh, they'll, that, that's how, that's the way they spin it into this horrible darkness. Um, it started off with a bit of transphobia, and now it's just become pure, weasened, venom um no matter what the issue is no matter what we do if you're on a women's only list or you speak on international women's day or whatever those things are they come at you with the rest it just feels as you say it, you know i so many of the community the trans community in the uk are terrified now i you know we you, you must know people trans people don't leave their houses they don't use yeah. lose anymore because they're they getting kidney infections they don't want to go out um, you know, and, you know, they, they're getting a lot of verbal abuse on the streets, which they're not reporting because the police don't take it seriously. Yeah, I know. And I, 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 I really don't know mm. how we, we get over this. Um, I mean, the, the, yeah. the one positive yeah. through this tsunami of um, hate that mm. I've been subjected to and which is still ongoing is that a number of people within the legal profession, um, solicitors, barristers, prosecutors, people who've worked um, in the home office, um, et cetera, have contacted me over the last mm. three or four days. Um, and they're aghast. They, they say this is clear. Yeah. It's not even something mm. that should even be debatable. It's a clear cut yes. reach of, of a number of acts. Mm -hmm. So they are advising me, um, and you know, I, I all I can do is bring it to the police's mm -hmm. attention. If they ultimately decide that they're not going to do anything, then it's going to end there. Mm -hmm. But I, I have done my mm -hmm. bit, and as as regards J.K. Rowling, you mm -hmm. know, I'm not saying um, that she wants um, to kill trans people or, or have people murdered what i'm saying is that someone somewhere whether it's a family member a friend whether it's the police somebody given the climate that we are living in yeah needs to remind her mm. that what she tweets mm. can potentially have very serious consequences yeah. that is mm. that's 
all I want yeah. out of this. That's it. No, I, I hear you. I mean, just this week, there were four other teenagers charged stabbing uh, another yeah. trans um, teenager. I mean, it, it's this, you know, it's not statistic, stochastic terrorism. I sort of sort of is. But the, yeah. the media blanking us out, the media not taking the, the, the media not taking us seriously, the politician rhetoric, um, you know, the, the alienation. I mean, the fact the other aspect is the division, you know, that getting LGB people to attack trans people as well. Um, and we're getting lots of women to attack trans people. And, and Graham and I often talk about this is that, you know, what do you think is who do you think is next? In America, we're seeing this play out in fast speed, trans people, kids, trans people, adults. Then it's same sex marriage. Then it's Handmaid's Tale, women's rights. And we're seeing that happening in America, whereas in Spain, in Ireland, in, in Finland, trans rights, women's rights, LGBT rights rose together. They rise or fall together. So if a mm. lesbian attacks a trans woman, well, you might as well blow a hole in the bottom of your boat because you're next. And then when you when the LGBT movement has fallen because trans people support the LGBT movement, we're part of it, then they're going after women's rights and we're not there to stand and defend them because we're yeah. allies together. So this division and getting gay guys and lesbians to attack trans people topples the whole LGBT community. And then so once we're gone, it's free, you know, we're the canary in the mine for women's rights. Once trans women are gone, the LGBT community's gone. What, who's next? That's what's happening in America. And that money, you know, we talk about Heritage Foundation, all that money flooding into the UK. Well, that's that's the next, that's the destiny, that's their route map. Trans kids, trans adults, LGBT community, women's rights. So we really should be pulling together. And these people attacking us and demonizing, it seems just feels like a big part of a big strategy of media politicians and a lot of iffy money. And I don't know if, that, if that's how you feel, but that's how, you know, we often talk about this on Labour, Labour Social. Do you feel like that? Yeah, I feel exactly like that. You know, mm. if you go back, I think a lot of trans people are now aware of this. Um, the big gathering in America called the uh, Values Voters Conference, which is when all the right wing groups, all the religious groups, they all come mm. together. And at this particular one, I think it was 2017, if I'm correct, Donald Trump was there with his Bible, mm. banging his Christian credentials. Um, mm. And a keynote speaker stood up and made a speech, and the gist of which was mm. that um, forget about attacking gay people. It's too late. They've won. They're protected by law and people accept them. So you're yeah. wasting your energy. However, go home, start attacking the T, the trans community, because um, people don't know about them yeah. still to this day. You can tell all sorts of things, suggest that they're going to be coming in bathrooms and raping people, suggest that mm -hmm. they're going to be um, winning all the sports, go out, spread these rumours. Yeah. Um, and if you knock the T out, mm -hmm. The rest will but start nice. to follow. And immediately after that speech, in those intervening years, this was 2017, you saw this explosion, this plethora of women's rights and very deliberately using the hand quote marks here, mm -hmm. um, groups sprout up, which aren't women's rights groups. As mm -hmm. we all know, you, you go on their sites, there's nothing about abortion, there's nothing about misogyny, the gender pay gap, or they're just not mentioned they're one issue yep. sites and it's all backed by very wealthy mm. um organizations either politically mm. or religious they have money yep. to burn so you have all these um organizations that have yep. set up uh, predominantly in the us and the uk which are actually invariably two people in a bedroom and a laptop mm. and yet they're able they have the funds mysteriously yeah to bring court cases to run big adverts mm. and billboards and it it just doesn't add up so no. clearly there is something fishy yeah about this whole movement it astounds me that the bbc have done numerous hit jobs on the trans community mm. And Stonewall, who were early on identified yeah. as being the rock in the UK, that yeah. were going to be standing with trans people, regardless of the yeah. horrendous malicious propaganda mm. that had been put out. And rather than look at a new organisation that had popped up out of nowhere called the LGB Alliance, 
which has internationally been recognized uh, as a hate organization, the BBC instead decided to do an expose over a number of parts, four or five episodes mm. on Stonewall. Yeah. This benign LGBT charity that had a long mm. history, that yeah. had always represented good inclusivity. And the BBC tried to take it down. Now, mm. th that's just crazy. Another mm. instance, which I'm just going to give you off the top of my head because it's relevant at the moment, the BBC have a, a missing miss information um reporter mariana spring who is i'm sure lovely i've never met her personally um we follow each other on twitter um and i'm sure she's a lovely person but it's really noticeable she's just brought out a book um about trolls online trolling mm. and it's really looking interesting looking at the book that she's brought out and her history of looking at this area of people being uh, maligned and hurt and damaged by mm. online discourse mm. that the one group <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that she hasn't covered mm. are actually the biggest target of all for this. Mm. I would say trans people, we're more of a target these days yep. than um people in the gun sites of racism mm. or yeah. religion yeah. and some people might balk at that and say don't be stupid you know racism is more serious um religious things such as anti-semitism is 10 times worse mm. than a little bit of transphobia but mm. the difference is that in terms of race yeah. and religion they have people willing to stand up for them publicly yeah, yeah. they have Mm. law on their side so people back off whereas trans people yeah. we literally have no protection whatsoever we're yeah a fair game we just didn't we just didn't get our laws in place in time in 2016 we were moving forward and then suddenly you know with self-id coming in that's when they were rising up before we got all our we were the last lot to go through to get queuing up for our mm -hmm. rights and we didn't get them locked in um yeah. hate crime protections work proper workplace protections um self-id all that stuff um and we left the european union because i'm i'm irish i'm in the european union so we have european protection as well as self-id and so the united kingdom just fell away at the wrong time with a you know with a government that came in with a populist prime minister that allowed the right hand side of his party to to go wild so it, it, it was a perfect storm. And we know the sort of with press, the sort of revolving door between the hard right, you know, GB News, Talk TV, all those fun yeah. channels, and Steve Nolan in the, what you were talking about, about Stonewall. Mm. I mean, well, well, I think Br British media now is merely an extension of the yeah. government. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I got back into journalism in um, the mid 1980s. I did my training and it was, as any journalist will tell you worth their mm. salt, it's drilled mm. into you that, you know, the job is just reporting facts. Yeah. Um, what has actually happened? You don't give an opinion. You don't try and influence somebody. That's completely gone out the window now. You know, news has died mm. in the UK. What we have now is PR on a massive scale. And that's all newspapers such as the Daily Mail, the Times and the Telegraph, um are these days you know they get briefed yep. by the government in advance mm. and they may as well be giving it to a pr house yeah. because they know that it's going to be a positive mm. um spin on what's happening if something negative happens towards the government regarding the economy or some um yep. despicable incident involving a minister you can bet your bottom dollar mm. that those same newspapers will yep. be running a distraction story about something else so it's completely yeah. corrupt and trans people don't stand a chance and just moving the discussion forward because it's been such a busy week um in the trans world as it were you know obviously we've had the announcement about puberty blockers yeah can you this explain week, a little bit about that yeah to yeah point. which is which is a complete stitch up and we've known this for a long time this is an, an inquiry the cas inquiry yeah. Um, 
which hasn't been set up with uh, genuine intentions. It's been um, set up to reach a predecided conclusion, to be there hmm. for the government to be able to justify taking a decision regarding trans healthcare in the UK. And I say the government, although, you know, this is a decision by the NHS, again, sadly, this is symptomatic of this culture wars government. Mm. Yeah. They have infested and infected multiple institutions um, from the BBC to the Charity Commission to the, um, the Equalities and Human Rights Commission to the BBC. They mm. have infected all yep. of these institutions, uh, planted their own lackeys, yep. and they do the bidding of the likes of Suella Braverman, Cami Badenoch, etc. So mm. trans people have always known that this was never going to be good news for us. Mm. Um, but the conclusions they, they've reached are just simply preposterous. Yeah. Um, and the biggest giveaway of all, which everyone is talking about, is the fact that they have banned puberty blockers, which have been around for 50 years. We have loads of data on them. They have banned puberty blockers mm. for trans kids, yeah. but they're still going to be prescribing the very same medication in the very same dosage to cis kids, which mm. suggests that trans mm. people we must have some sort of genetic makeup that makes us allergic to puberty. Do, do we come out in hives or spots? Or th It's just preposterous and it does not stand up. But it is going to take a lot of work now mm. to yeah. do this and go back to what we had. It's, it's going to probably involve taking yeah. a course to the European Court of Human Rights, where I am sure mm. it will be quashed. But yeah. the, the the point is, you are probably going to you're going to end up with a generation of trans yeah. kids, which breaks my heart, mm. who are now go, going to suffer. They're going to be in distress. Yeah, it's going to cost a lot of money and a lot of pain bringing these cases forward. Yeah. And the same people who have forced this decision on mm. the government on the pretense that yeah. oh, yeah. we're only looking after children we care about children we want to look after them those same individuals as soon as that trans kid turns 18 and says look i still want to transition i'm trans mm. that's what i'm going to do those same people who are protecting will turn on that individual yeah. and will be gone you're a threat you're a pedophile you're a mm. groomer you look you look like a man that's the other aspect obviously yeah. if you take puberty blockers you have a better chance yeah. of passing and i think a lot of people who aren't trans mm. just think that, that this is like a vanity thing on the, the part of trans people mm. passing it's not it's really important and it and it relates to safety yeah. as well if you don't stand out mm. in a crowd you're not gonna mm. attract attention yeah. yeah so passing is really important not for cosmetic reasons for your own personal safety as an individual. And to my mind, if a child has spent 10 years, which mm. is what they would end up doing, 10 yeah. years or so, telling everybody every single day of their life, look, mm. I'm not a boy, I'm a girl, or the other way around, mm. um, why would you make them go through a puberty mm. then? that They've told you that they explicitly do not want puberty doesn't even relate to your identity either puberty is about your sexuality it's the awakening of your sexuality and it ties into this whole old myth that mm. trans people are actually gay people who are a little bit no. confused and if you leave trans people alone yeah the sexuality will kick yeah. in and they'll become gay yeah. people sexuality has got nothing to do yeah with, yeah, sorry. absolutely. And I think um, just two things just to build on what you said there. I mean, one, which backs up, we were saying, go for the kids, then go for the adults. So this, this is the kids in the UK. That's where the I mean, they're, they're attacking adults, but they're going after the kids. And, and we'll talk about Friday's bill as well. That's going to go through Parliament. Um, so that's the aspect of that is it, 
then you've got this, the, the, some of the LGB members that are attacking trans people saying you're eliminating LGB people and the, that trope, even though the census says there's more LGBT people than ever before. Mm-hmm. So we're not really eradicating LGB and trans yeah. people are LGB anyway. So that is another aspect. And the fact is, I want to live in a society where even if you don't pass, you can live your life of as course. well. And we should. I mean, the fact is, I, I really hear what you're saying. I mean, you know, I've been on estrogen for over 25 years. I used to pass. I'm I'm in my 50s now. I <laughs> as well as I used to. But the fact is that um, we should be able to be whoever we want to be. I think that the kid going through puberty is probably the most stressful thing for them. Puberty. There are, I mean, I was listening before this chat tonight. There are hundreds of papers from Australia, from America, saying that people puberty block, blockers are safe. They prolong, um, they save more lives um, because it stops the child self-harming, having suicidal thoughts. It's there to protect them. It, it pauses them to give them a chance to work, work out who they are and they don't go through the stress of going through puberty. But if you let them go through that, then yeah, bang, that, that is incredibly stressful. They have to wait till they're 18. And that is, you know, and, and it's so regulated. You've got two psychiatrists, you've got social worker, you've got the parents. Every This isn't something the kid does. I mean, there's so much regulation in the UK on control of that. Yeah. But the demonization of children is important for the roadmap of trans kids, LGBT people and women. We've got to get the got to get the kids banned. We don't want to talk about it in schools. And we got to get the we got to get the get the hospitals closed. And they haven't opened the two new ones yet. It's still Tavistock. And so yeah. it is a strategy for me. It feels like a strategy. Um, and it's really is hurting these kids. They're ones they're protecting, as you say. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I would just I, I agree with every single word you've just said there. Um, uh, but I, I would add on that the system that the UK looks mm-hmm. like uh, it's about to get, thanks to this yeah. um, hijacking of yeah. the NHS and gender critical people deliberately targeting positions within uh, the NHS and interference from the government, you are going to end up a trans healthcare system which has one goal, and that is conversion. It's state conversion therapy. Yeah. yeah. Everything is being done to direct trans people oh well, why don't you try this why don't we, we go down this route where mm. there are all you know we all know there are massive queues yeah. Yeah. in the nhs for these mm. treatments and mm. it's all about trying to change a trans person's identity i'm sick of hearing people say mm. oh leave the children alone i am leaving the children alone i'm quite happy yeah. to butt out as all trans people are yeah. and just leave it to be a decision between the patient yeah. and the doctor it's mm. you who needs to yeah. butt out butt out the gender critical movement instead of telling people yeah. who they are people you don't even know you've got mm. literally no knowledge of this subject yeah. and yet you're there yeah. deciding what's best for somebody there, there is so much common ground actually you know with abortion mm. And obviously the, the abortion um, debate has raged for decades, but you essentially have the same type of people, you know, religious, right wing, they're against mm. personal liberty, mm. and uh, they feel that they have the right to stick their sticky beaks yeah. into other people's business and make decisions for them. And I just think it's outrageous. Mm. You know, this is the 21st century, 2024. We mm. should have moved on yeah. from this. Absolutely. I agree. And I think it the link up of all those groups you were talking about, they a lot of them, when you look at them on Twitter, it's the same people following all those groups and are in those groups. And yet they all write a paper, they, you know, they have their Sunday night Zoom meeting, and they all write a paper yeah. and they'll submit it against trans people. Not expert, they're not experts, but they'll write it. And this organization like cycling or you know, whatever it is, or sporting body or, and they go, oh, look at all this intro. Oh, look at all these bodies. But the, you look at the people who follow those bodies. It's almost the same people. It feels. Yeah. They, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's pure theater. Yeah. You're absolutely right. Again, when, when they go to these meetings and they lobby, it's very easy now. Anyone can do yeah. it really. Mm. You can set up a website that actually yeah. looks like a government department, really yeah. official. And mm. um, so they, 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 just populate all these little groups which only have two or three people involved with them and then they're they're chatting to each other on whatsapp Mm. and then they go to well the institute of um gender studies and blah 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 said that and it's absolute hokum 
There is no substance behind it. Mm. But unfortunately, people are falling for it. They do, yeah. Sadly. It's a it's a it's a well affected, well funded strategy. Um yeah. and you know, and it's why, you know, it's why Labour Social and and the, the stuff that Graham Graham is one of the best allies I know. And that's why he invited me on to work on Sabre Social. But yeah, it is it, I mean actually that we're going to talk about good news at the end because we're going to talk about labor itself in a minute, but it does feel like there are lots of activists that we are in labor social who come and talk on labor social and they have big followings in their own rights and they are big allies and they are putting that mess. I mean, in a way, this is why the Tories are doing so badly. It's not because the media is not the media supporting the Tories, but there's so much activism on YouTube. There's so yeah. many people with followers talking and breaking down what's really going on. That's how I became yeah, politically yeah. away, you know, we have a great friend, um, Phil Morehouse, and that's how I got into politics by following Phil. And then that led. Right. To... And <laughs> suddenly you realize there's a lot of people out there that are actually really decent. You look at the comments about trans in Labour Social and many of the other um, contributors. You think, yeah. wow, there are some really nice people out there. Yeah. Oh, can, can I can I mention at this juncture? Yeah. And um, I think the other good thing about the last um, week or so of absolutely horrendous vileness um, triggered by J.K. Rowling's tweet is the actual opening of eyes. The people yeah. who up until this point, this point have given J.K. Rowling herself and the gender critical movement generally the benefit of the doubt that, oh, all they're doing is sticking mm. up for women. You know, mm. they yeah. They have nothing against trans people. They're just sticking up. Women. Wow. Well, I think the actual ferociousness of what you can see now mm. um, yeah. on Twitter about me mm. has shocked people to the core. It's because it's it's disgusting. Yeah. It's it's filth. Yeah. Um, and I've I've had so many messages from people who I've never en engaged mm. with on social uh, mm. media. Yeah. Um, who who've seen what's happening? That they, they recognise when somebody is being yes. bullied, when it's an unfair fight, um, mm. and that's that's been really welcoming to me. Actually, Good. you know, that's something that I've taken heart mm. from, and ultimately, you know, that may well prove to be their undoing. The fact yeah. that they are getting so confident now in how yeah obnoxious and venomous they can be that they go past the tipping point yeah yeah it's that moment in you know david mitchell are we the bad guys with the hat and the desk <laughs> and it's like maybe we're the bad guys yeah you are the bad guys and you're That's undoing right. your own rights because once they're done with us they're coming for you and you're going to be a big surprise when they put you in the white hood and the red cloak and tell you to have babies you're going to be a big it's going to be a big surprise to you yeah well it, it won't end with trans people no these people will never be satisfied. No, but you know what happens when they're being fitted for their handmaid's tail outfit? They'll be going, trans people did this. They'll be still blaming us. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> this week, we've also seen Keir Starmer wade in. Well, not wade into, but he's been yeah. asked about trans women. It's mm. always trans women, isn't it? They're never yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. They don't seem to exist. <laughs> Uh, trans women in sports and he said oh no obviously we've got to do the common sense thing and I always worry when people say common sense because it never mm. seems like common sense to me but um, I get the impression that Labour are trying to make sure they shut down any 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 mm. chance that, that the other side have got to get them on something yeah to make their own Tory voters turn up to vote against Labour yeah and, that, and I'm having to swallow my tongue a lot about um the eu in particular because yeah. every time it's brought up mm. it's like no no we're not going to rejoin the eu we're not even yeah. going to talk about it good day to you sir and then he walks <laughs> up and 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 i get why he's doing it even though i am passionately i want to rejoin the eu tomorrow but i understand why he's doing it because mm. they want to fight the election on their terms they don't want to fight it on what the tories want to fight it on and do you know what that idiot leanderthal Leenock Lee Powell <laughs> said it last year, didn't he? He said we're going to fight it on 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 um, transphobia, and we're going to fight it on um, culture, wars. culture wars. Stop the boats. Stop the boats. That's the one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I just don't. I, I, yeah. But at the same time, it's yeah, it's, it's I, really upsetting that the party that you want to be put in this progr progressive 
face forward is is <laughs> going along with the you know the gender yeah. criticals freaking out about the fact there's a there's a there's a a, 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 a transgender weightlifter from New Zealand. Mm. Is she winning yeah. all the trophies? I know. Well, no? well, well I heard this week, uh, <laughs> just because you're touching on sport, I'm going to talk about Labour very quickly, but I'll just drop in a sport, in fact. And that was the fact that um, trans athletes have been allowed in the Olympics since 2004. Mm -hmm. It's now 2024. In that intervening 20-year period, there have been 70,000 athletes competing at the Olympics. Two of them have been trans yeah. Neither got anywhere. Neither got close no. to a medal. So the whole sport, it's just preposterous. Yeah. It just doesn't measure up. But on Labour, I concur, mm. Graham. I agree totally. Mm. I was really angry, actually, when, when I first read what Keir Starmer had said yeah. and the way that the Tory papers, you've got to bear in mind that they yeah. are the Tory papers, yeah. um, were saying that mm. Keir Starmer and Labour are going to um, ban trans kids and athletes from from sport mm. but actually if you look where he said he actually said you know we're going to leave the decision to to sporting bodies mm. um which isn't as actually as bad as mm. i first thought and, and mm. the headline yeah. suggests and I, and I agree i think what labor are doing and i don't blame them mm. for it really i do like people with fight though but i can see mm. why that why they're doing it they're adopting a strategy yeah. um of not giving any targets whatsoever for yeah. the tories to attack so mm. maybe it's blind faith yeah. i don't know yeah, and exactly. i know i know a lot of trans people are actually worried and and put off voting mm. for Labour yeah. because of what's happened and the fact that they still have Rosie Duffield and, and these yeah. type of characters in mm. the party. But maybe it's blind faith. I don't know. I'm still hoping that once they're actually in power, I think the lev level of venom, because the government are feeding this culture war, yeah. I don't think Labour have an appetite mm. yeah. to well, have a culture war. So I think that will the plug will be pulled yeah. on that. And I do think generally... It's maybe it's not going to be uh, Nirvana heaven for for trans people, and we're going to get everything we want. But it is definitely going to be better. And I would absolutely say to any trans person out there, hopefully we're going to have a general election in May. Please, mm. fingers crossed. And I would encourage them mm. um, not to be put off voting yeah. Labour. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean they have to vote Labour. If the best chance of winning in their seat is a Liberal Democrat or a Green. Yep. Then go down that route. The priority for everybody who's mm, tactical voting. socially aware and and left minded mm. should be getting rid of the Tory. We can sort out yeah. all the other stuff, whether it's you know mm. the EU, whatever. Yeah. We can sort that out yeah. once we're in. Yeah. But the priority has got to be getting rid of the Tories. Yeah. And I at, at Labour Social, we want the two PRs, press regulation and yeah. cultural representation but we also i'm obviously got a little caveat that obviously i'm going to help you get in i'm going to campaign for you but once you're in you better you better do something on trans rights and it better mm. be more than you're saying so i'm i'm hoping you know because i mean i emailed graham as soon as i saw the article and i said well he it, you know he could have said well but there's professional sport and there's amateur sport there are different types of sport that don't rely on body strength then we could look at handicapping you know, people with like you know somebody who's tall, somebody who's bigger, like they do on some other uh, events, and we could also we could have a discussion about trying to include rather than. Ex but this actually isn't that. But it was just like no, no, we're just going to ban trans women, and it's like well, okay. But the uh, grain came back with the same, you know, the the, the, the thing you've just said really the same. Yeah. Keeping your head down, wait till let us get us it, get us in, and then we'll do something. And I I am going to be holding to account because kids at school want to play sports. With their friends they wonder of course. and and it's got to be about include canada a lot of other countries are trying to get include and find a way to include yeah. if it's fair and safe but, but, but you know what rachel if you actually mm. look i think the sports aspect yeah people can get bogged down in yeah. stats and it's, uh, about it. it's about exclusion though in, uh, and, and, and about you know t testosterone levels yeah. and yeah, estrogen yeah. levels and, and yeah. it all gets so complicated that nobody can understand and for me, it's a really simple argument. You've got to look at the fact that we are a tiny population. Mm. There has yeah. never been 
any elite yeah. trans champion yeah. in the history of sport, even though we've been able to compete since the 1970s. Yeah. Um, yeah. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. With yeah. There is no evidence to suggest yeah. that cis women are being prevented yeah. from, from flourishing and it, exploiting their natural sporting talents. Yeah. Um, it's, and it's, I think that's that's what we we need to do. I, I yeah. this this thing which I would actually disagree with. You know, I don't think you can go down the route of measuring people and saying, <laughs> "Oh well, you're you're yeah. such and such." Sport isn't equal. You've only yeah. I was at it's my first true. ever. I was at my first ever rugby match the other week. Great club, Keithley Cougars, who um, are owned by two gay guys, and they've got right. the team in the rainbow strips, etc. Very inclusive. <laughs> and and when the team. Lined. I looked at the team, yeah. and obviously you have people who are like six foot mm. four, yeah. built like a brick, you <laughs> yeah. know. Uh, yeah. But you also have guys in there who are like yeah. five foot two, who are tiny, but they all have a function yeah. within yeah. the the team. So this this idea that sport yeah, is like true. everybody has an yeah. equal, it's it's just preposterous. Yeah. That's a really good point. And I think the fact is it, it isn't about fairness because we weren't talking about trans women in sport in 2016. This is about the battleground that we've been talking about. Hospitals, yeah. toilets, life, single sex space. This is just a battleground for them. They don't care about women's sport. They don't they care. Don't about care. Fairness. They don't care. This is just a battleground of exclusion. Because yeah. if you're talking about chess and snooker <laughs> and darts, we know this is not about fairness. This is about exclusion. Yeah. Um, Crazy. So um, what about the debate on Friday quickly? Because we've got a little bit more. You're seeing the Liz Trust bill on Friday. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, again, absolutely ridiculous. Obviously, she's been over to the US, uh, met Steve Bannon and all these mm -hmm. um, weirdos. And she's come back and you can tell she, her head's been filled and it's all yeah. kind of vomiting um, out of her. Um, yeah. Obviously, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I don't think, thankfully... Um, there's any time for no. the government to actually do anything it's about the second this. reading it might go into report and then disappear they won't yeah have to. yeah so um i would like to think um that it won't reach that stage but yeah. who knows it, it maybe will it'll be nice um, to see some labor mps there on friday won't it <laughs> yeah well, well, <laughs> the good well ones. We're, we're counting on labor to speak up but again it all comes down to how Kia is going to play it tactically and will he interpret Labour MPs mm. uh, voting against it as something yeah. that the Tory press um, can exploit? So yeah. I yeah. don't know, but ultimately, yeah. I, I think our saviour on that front is going to be time. The fact yeah. that the Tories are now dodos, <laughs> they're toast, yeah. Yeah. they're gone. Yeah. So they, they in, in a lot of ways now... Yeah. I think the Tories can be as outrageous as they yeah. possibly yeah. like. And we've seen that in other areas as well. You know, when they're talking about scrapping um, national insurance mm. um, contributions. Yeah. yeah. I'll bet a, a pound to a penny. They haven't really costed that. They've just no. thought, if we say this, it yeah. might but, suck people in. But they got rid of your seven bins and your meat tax, India. So well, they, they, no. yeah. But again, they're really good examples, aren't they, of them... <laughs> They're, they're floundering around mm. trying to come up with um, just insane suggestions. Mm. And I actually think they look so tired. When yeah. you look at PMQs yeah. today, I don't know if you actually we did. You, you saw it, <laughs> but they've kind of given up. And you can yeah. you can right see if it, was a, if it was a boxing match, just going back to sport, the, yeah. the towel will be going in now. It, yeah. it is over. It's yeah. just... When it's going to be over. I'm just waiting for that scene from Downfall where the three generals go into Rishi's, you know, <laughs> and Fuhrer, you know, and it's that that scene. Yeah, Something's yeah. going to do that, aren't they? We've lost. You know, we haven't got any more policies. Yeah. We've made up all the stupid clown ones and there's nothing left, mind Fuhrer. And you go, everybody leave the office and then starts to rant. Yeah. All, all they're doing now is I think they have one objective that, that they know they're not going to win. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of laying the ground mm. so that... Um, Labour have a terrible term because yeah, there are there are there's no money. Yeah. Uh, they're signed up to all kinds of preposterous yeah. um, commitments, yeah. and that's what they're going to do. They they're, they're banking on having five years out when they can refresh mm. um, and come back. But that's why it's imperative. I think when we when we're all voting, 
Yeah. Um, to get rid of them as much as possible. It's not enough just to beat them yeah. this time around because, <laughs> because of the elements that have come in. Yeah. They're not really the Conservative Party no. anymore. I never had any time for the Conservatives as they were, yeah. but they're, they're an, a different animal now. You've got all yeah. these crazy far-right extremists. Yeah. So I think it's incumbent on anyone who yeah. genuinely cares about Britain and, yeah. and is concerned about fair, fairness mm. and um, equality, that we yeah. wipe them out at the ballot box yeah um with our votes as much as possible india that that i was going to say what's the pudding as they say on the trawl what's what's the good news but i think you you finish this on a perfect note <laughs> um we all got to get out there strategically vote um yeah. and and wipe them out so that they never rise again thank you so yeah. much it was the easiest interview i've ever done because oh you, well that's good went... you know what it's been so nice just having the <laughs> opportunity to vent a little bit so Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you so thank you. much for doing this, India. Really, really it's appreciate pleasure. it. And thank you, Rachel, for uh, basically hosting this. I didn't do very much. <laughs> um... <laughs> well, and, and let me say thank you to Graham and Rachel as well. It's been a pleasure, guys. Oh, thank thanks for having us. And thanks, uh, thanks for watching. And we'll be back next week, hopefully with another episode of The Intersection. So hey. watch out for that. Until then, ta-da. <laughs>